Okay, welcome back. Today's lesson in the checking account unit will be how to fill out a check register. What's a check register, you might ask? Check register is just a fancy name for a record that you keep of your checking account. Really what you're keeping track of is something called the balance. A balance in any sort of account is the amount of money you have in an account. So if we're talking about a checking account or a savings account, a bank account that you own, it's how much money you have in there. Obviously, as you use your checking account, the balance will change. It might go up, it might go down. If you want to know what the new balance is after some sort of activity has happened, the way to calculate is to do this. You take your previous balance, and if you are writing a check to someone, you subtract that check amount. Or if you're making an automatic transfer to someone, like you're di just directly putting money into their account without writing a check, it's called an automatic transfer. That, If you're taking money out of your account to do that, then that would also get subtracted. So that's if you are writing a check or if you're sending money to someone else. On the other hand, if you are gaining money in your checking account, then you would take your previous balance and add whatever is being deposited, whether that's a new check or other types of cash. So it's pretty obvious. If you're gaining money, you add it to your previous balance. If you're losing money, you subtract it from your previous balance. That's it. Now, a little bit more about check registers before we get to practicing with them. The reason we use check registers is because you really don't want to screw up your checking account. You need to know how much money you have in your account. And just as important as that, you need to know how much money is going into and out of your checking account. Okay, Not only how much you have in, but how much is coming in, how much is going out at any one time. What you're trying to avoid are checks that bounce. A bounced check is one that comes right back to you. It doesn't go to the person that it's intended. Instead of going through the bank system for uh, legitimizing and actually making all the switches with the money that it says to, the bounce check gets returned to you. It bounces back to you like a rubber ball uh, without that amount of money getting paid out. And the reason that that would happen is because you wrote a check for more money than you have in your account. So let's say, for instance, you have $50 in your checking account. You can't go and write a check for $75 to someone else because you don't have that much money. That's a bounced check. It'll bounce right back to you. The person won't get paid, and it's really embarrassing for you because now the bank knows that you're, not, not that you're up to something, but the bank knows that you are somehow like mismanaging your money. It's really embarrassing. You don't want a bounced check. In order to prevent this, in order so that you can keep track of how much money you have in an account, the bank gives you a little check organizer um, when they give you a stack of checks. Okay, You get the checks directly from the bank. Put it in your checkbook and use it. And this is what is known as a check register. It's also known as a check ledger. It gives you a place to keep track of all the activity in your account. As activities are just things like deposits, withdrawals, uh, if you buy anything off a debit card or take money out in an ATM, and any checks that you write. You will use your check register, your little organizer, to write down and record whenever you deposit money in your account, whenever you write a check that eventually goes to someone else and that money comes out of your account, whenever you use your debit card or you get money out at an ATM, you should record this by hand in your check register. Uh, whenever you have to pay some sort of fee that the bank charges, whenever you deduct a fee, that means the bank's charging you for some use, you've got to pay that money, you should record that. And whenever you withdraw money from your account. Now the nice thing about a check register, and we'll see this in a second, is that it labels all these different columns for you. And these different columns are where you record what type of transaction it was, how much money came in and out, and what your new balance is. Um, there's a column for check number so that you can keep track of which checks you've used. There's a, there's a column for date so that you can record when these things happened. Uh, a description of the transaction. So like, did you write a check? Where, you know, did you pay someone? Did, was it a fee? Did someone give a check to you? And you always want to make a note, just like we have in kind of like a memo on a check. Um, let's see. Uh, there's a 
there's two columns. Uh, one is called payment, so two additional columns, I, I mean. One additional column is called payments or debit. These are where you record how much money is coming out of your account if you're making a payment to someone or you're doing a debit, like on a debit card. And then finally, there's two other columns, one for deposit and credit. Here's the amounts of money that go into your account. And then finally, there's a column all the way on the far right called the balance. This is where you actually figure out what your new balance is based on those equations that I showed you earlier. If money's coming into your account, you add it. If money's coming out of your account, you subtract it. Okay? You want to record this right away. You don't want to do it later. You want to record it right away. The best way to understand all this is just to practice. So for practice, we've got a sample um, We've got some sample activities here, and we've got a check ledger down below, and we're going to practice filling out the check ledger as we go through the different activities. So record the following activities in the register provided. Record your new balance after each entry. Bullet number one says your balance on October 29th is $237.47. So for October 29th, I'm going to write 10, 29. You can write the year if you want, but um, probably not super necessary. Transaction, well, we're not giving any money away. We're not putting getting any extra money. Let's just say that this is our starting balance. Okay, let's say that this is like a new page in our check register. So this is how much money we start with. Our starting balance is $237.47. The next bullet down will go on the next line. You forgot to ask your mom to write a check for a field trip. The check is due today, October 29th. So you write a check of your own, number 115, for $18 to ESM High School. So, check number 115. The date is the 29th of October, 1029. And the tr transaction, I'm going to write down ESM, that's who the check is going to, that's important, and I'm going to write dash field trip. So now I know what it's going to. I have to decide if this was a payment or debit, or is it deposit or credit? Is the money coming out of my account or going into my account? You're writing the check. You're giving the money to ESM High School. So this is a payment. It's a payment of $18. I'm not going to write anything in deposit and credit because that's not what's happening here. So now I have to do the math. I had $237.47 in my account, and I just paid $18 out of it. So that means I subtract my new balance is... $219.47. There's our first two bullet points done. Third bullet point, you get a paycheck for October 15th through 30th for $62.75 on October 30th. So this isn't a check number that you're writing, so you don't have to write in check number, but this is October 30th, so 1030, and we're going to write in paycheck, and we'll even write in when the paycheck was. Paycheck from October 15th to the 30th, it was a deposit. You're putting money into the account. You're putting $62.75 into the account. So now what you're going to do, your previous balance was $219.47. It wasn't the $237. That's what it was before you wrote the check for the field trip. Now your new previous balance is this, $219.47. We're going to add $62.75 and we get $282.22. Your balance went up. You got more money in your account now. Your birthday is November 4th, and you get a check from your grandmother for $25. You deposit it that day. Again, you're not writing the check, so nothing in check number, but November 4th would be 11 4. The transaction, grandma birthday check, You write in, it, since it's a, okay, it's a deposit. I almost wrote it in the wrong spot. It's a deposit, so that's $25 more. Take your previous balance, $282.22 plus $25. Your account is now up to $307.22. And so all we're doing is we're just recording as we go along how much money should be in our account. This is going to be important because later on we'll learn how to check to make sure that the bank and you both agree on how much money is in your account. On November 5th, you go to a sporting <coughs> excuse me, you go to a sporting event and run out of money. You use the ATM in the lobby to get $15 out for snacks. So this is on November 5th, no check number involved. 
you went to the ATM. Now, you are taking money out of your account. Therefore, it goes in the payment slash debit column. And therefore, we're going to subtract $15 from our previous balance. You're now left with $292.22 in your account. Five more. Your credit card bill is due on November 10th, so on November 6th, you write a check, number 116. This is on November 6th. To Credit USA for $51.16. So I'm just going to write for the transaction Credit USA bill. You were paying them $51.16. So we're going to subtract, subtract $51.16 from your previous account balance, $241.06 should be what you're left with. Your sister Ann owes you money. She pays you $20 on November 10th. Make sure we have the right date. November 10th. This is from Sister Ann. It's a deposit because she's giving you $20, so you can deposit that. So we add that. To our previous balance, $261.06. You need to buy flowers for the dance. You go to the ATM on November 12th and withdraw $25. You're taking money out of the account, so we subtract, and you're left with $236.06. You deposit your paycheck for November 1st through the 15th for $65.65 on November 16th. So paycheck uh, November 1 through 15. This is money coming into your account, so that's $65.65. You add that to your previous balance should be, your balance now should be $301.71. And then finally, your Aunt Jane, who is always late, sends you a birthday check that you receive on the 12th of November, but you're busy and don't deposit it until the 17th. The check is for $35. That's 35 more dollars coming into your account. So your final balance is now $336.71. That's all there is to it. The math is very straightforward. Add if you're gaining money, subtract if you're losing money. Okay. Being organized like this is one of the best things you can do to make sure that you know how much money is in your account. Next time, when we come back, we'll start looking at bank statements. And a bank statement is just what the bank is showing you, that uh, what the, the bank's idea of what you're doing with your account. They send you these um, somewhat frequently, about every month or so, and it's important to be able to read them. So we'll talk about that next time.